we're happy to have with us uh, today, Julia Benfield. Julia has probably had more jobs, more separate careers than anybody I know. And we're going to talk about one of her ventures, Benfield Wines in Swanton, Ohio. And uh, Julia, why don't you start from the beginning? Tell us your journey. Uh, where did you start from and all the different jobs and places you've been um, through today's date? Sure. Um, so my name is Julia Benfield. My husband is Rob. We own Benfield Wines in Swanton. I was born and raised in Defiance. My parents still live there. Uh, my aunts still live there. And my sister lives in Bryan. So we're all native Northwest Ohioans. I imported my husband from Pontiac, Michigan. <laughs> we met online almost 26 years ago before that was actually even a thing. Uh, so we've lived uh, in Detroit. We've lived in New England. And then we moved back to the Ohio area about 20 years ago. And when we lived in New England, there were wineries all over and we got used to doing wineries and all kinds of fun things that they do. And when we moved here, there was one initially. So we got licensed about seven years ago and we started just out of our house. We started out of our pantry initially. Then we got our uh, fourth 400 square foot house bonded and we opened a tasting room out of our house. Uh, and then we bought a building here in Swanton and we love it. Uh, I'm a nurse by trade. I've been a nurse for 28 years. And as you said, I've had lots of um, incar in, uh, incarnations of that role. I've been a disaster nurse for the federal government. I was a flight nurse for a private company in Michigan. I worked in the heart cath lab for years and helped start an angioplasty program just outside of Boston. I've been in the ER for the last 20 and been a forensic nurse for uh, almost 18 years. And uh, the, last, the last six years, I've been a nurse paralegal, which is how I met Chuck. I did my internship as a nurse paralegal with his office and then worked for Chuck for about five years up until a year ago. And then now I just work for my hospital full-time in our legal department. But uh, the winery definitely is a labor of love. My husband is an airplane mechanic by trade. He was working full-time up until four years ago. So we've been licensed for seven. So the, for the first three years, we both worked full time and had the winery open. So, but the last four years, that's been his full time job and my second full time job. <laughs> so um, why a winery? Um, how much was it a hobby to start with? Um, because most people don't um, with full time jobs, don't keep their full time jobs and start a major project like this yeah it's been a big project so but it really did start as him making wine for me he, um, i always say that he makes wine to make me happy so when we moved here 20 years ago there was one winery and we uh, decided that he wanted to make wine for friends and family it then became making uh, wine for friends family and weddings which then people were asking us how to buy the wine so we got licensed seven years ago. We started selling online and privately just out of our house and then moved here to Swanton to another house with a big, with a bigger property to be able to possibly put up a building. And we ran into some issues with our township, even though I had provided Supreme Court precedent showing that we could do it. Uh, so we ended up just buying the historic Pilead Opera House here in Swanton. And that's where our business is located currently. So you're located in downtown Swanton. Um, why don't you explain to the people that don't know uh, the history of your building and how big the building is? And, uh, you know, are there, uh, is it haunted? You know, what's oh going gosh. on? Yeah, so we uh, we are on Main Street in Swanton. Everybody thinks Airport Highway is Main Street in Swanton, but it's not. There's a historic Main Street. Our building was built in 1896. Just prior to our building being built, there was a little hotel sitting on the site in 1895 that burnt down. So then two steel magnets, Sly and Cameron, bought the property and built our building in 1896. And it's had lots of lots of life. It was an A&P grocery store. It's been multiple hardware stores, uh, lots of different businesses. And the upstairs of our building that covers about 4,000 square feet was initially the Pilead Opera House for the area where they had local graduations and plays and all kinds of big things. But a tornado hit the building in 1920 and the front of it came down and they had to rebuild it. And then 
After that, the upstairs was an indoor golf course and it was a candle pin bowling alley. And then it was a youth center for the area with a basketball court and the basketball court is still there. When you decided to open up a winery, how, how many wineries are, were there at the time? You said one? Yeah, in the area, there was only one at the time. Uh, we started making six gallons at a time in the six gallon carboys and just making wine for us. And my husband figured it out on the internet with, you know, just reading and doing some research. And then it became making bigger batches and bigger batches. Then we bought 30 gallon tanks. Then we bought 100 gallon tanks and just been growing, growing and growing for the last seven years. So we've had amazing community support from Swanton. We are very involved in our community here and we appreciate the his, not only the history of our building, but the history of Swanton and the community support that we've had. When you're making wine, um, I mean, how, how do you make wine? I mean, is, do you just have one big area in the winery that you make wine? So our area or our building is split up into the, at least the first floor is split up into four areas. So we have our tasting room, which is the the um, beginning part of the historic opera house. And a lot of people who have been in the area for a long time remember it as an A&P grocery store and where the, where the cash register was when they were kids. Um, so when you walk in, you see the beautiful exposed brickwork and the original hardwood floors. And then if you look up, you see the amazing tin ceilings that are original to the building. Then we have a party room where we have live music almost every weekend, sometimes twice a weekend, Fridays and Saturdays, but almost every Saturday for sure. Um, and then in the back of our building, we have our production room where we have a full kitchen and we also have our production area where we make wine. So we have lots of big stainless tanks and we just made some wine yesterday. We made some blackberry Merlot yesterday and some peach Chardonnay. So that's where all the production equipment is. And um, the the fourth area is office space and it's going to be room for expansion. So we have lots of expansion plans. You're in downtown Swanton. What hours are you open? Tuesdays and Wednesdays were open five to eight. Thursdays were open three to eight. And Fridays and Saturdays during the summer were open 12 to nine. And then usually after Labor Day, we I'm sorry, 12 to 10. And then after Labor Day, we go back 12 to nine. So you've talked about um, events that you have. Um, let's go through some of the different events that you have. Classes, what sort of classes do you have? We've had lots of different kind of painting classes and we have tons coming up. We have, uh, we support lots of local other small businesses. Uh, we have Whiskey Bean Candle Company that comes in and makes candles with us. We have Toledo Bonsai that's coming in to do a bonsai class with us in July. That's super exciting. We've never done that before. Uh, we have an artist um, named Amanda from Bless This Hot Mess that comes in and makes all those cute little signs that people love to hang on their houses or the porch boards that they have outside their houses. Uh, we also have an artist named Sherry Schroeder from Art Matters Limited who has been doing classes with us since we were doing them out of our garage years ago. <laughs> so it's we have lots of classes to offer. Uh, we also have a medium that comes in about six or seven times a year. Her name's Serena LaPointe and she does a ticketed event, which is very well attended and she's amazing. Uh, she's the one who told us about all the ghosts in our building and our ghost is our, our building is certainly haunted. It's had lots of lives and we had Toledo Spirit Hunters in here just a few months, a couple months ago to kind of verify all the things that we've been seeing and that we weren't crazy. <laughs> so I'm assuming that any organization that wanted to liven things up could contact you to try to schedule a meeting or event, uh, because I'm assuming like painting, people probably paint a whole lot better after they've drank a few glasses of wine. <laughs> Absolutely. People have less inhibitions when they drink a little bit of wine. Most of our artists use stencils, which makes it super easy and fun because you don't have to worry so much about it. Um, we are doing all kinds of fun stuff this summer. I love the musicians that we have lined up for the summer. Ramona Collins plays here. We have a great band called Dragonfly. Uh, we just have a lot going on and it's a lot of fun. So live music during the summer, how often do you have live music? Well, this week we have it Friday and Saturday, and almost every week we have it at least on Saturday, if not both Friday and Saturday. So people can check out our website or our Facebook page, which has an events page, and you can see everything that we're doing on either one of those pages. Now, you mentioned food. Have you always had food, or is that just a, a newer newer thing? We started doing food about eight months ago. 
My husband cooked in a restaurant when he was uh, 16, 17, 18, and he is an amazing cook. He's luckily taught our, all four of our kids how to cook, which is awesome. Um, so he's a great cook. We have flatbreads and paninis and all kinds of great stuff on our menu. Um, and our menu is available Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, we were doing Thursday through Saturday, but now we're doing rock star bingo every Wednesday, which has uh, been a lot of fun. It's musical bingo. And so people have come in and eat and drink and have some fun and they can win some gift cards playing musical bingo. So if somebody just wants to come in to uh, drink and talk, they can do that too, correct? Absolutely. Our tasting room is open Tuesday through Saturday. Even when we have events going on, our tasting room is open. So we're happy to have anyone come in. We've um, been doing some events with some of the nonprofits like Humani Habitat for Humanity. Um, so we're always up open to other suggestions, but our tasting room is always open and we're happy to have people come in and just uh, try out the wine that my husband makes, which is amazing. Let's talk about the wine. Um, how many different types of wine do you sell? We currently have 17 on our menu. We have a, the full spectrum of dries and sweets. We have two specialty ports that we're serving right now. One is a five blend port, which I know would be Chuck's favorite because it has my dog on the front and Chuck is big into dogs. Right. So, Where do you get uh, the juices for the wine? So when my husband hands me a list of juice that's available, we get all of our juice from California and we make all the wine right here on site. So the juice comes to us in either buckets or drums, and then we turn it into wine. And what are the different varieties of wine that you make? So we have your normal varietals. We have Cab, we have Sauvignon Blanc. We have a good selection of dries. Uh, we have Tempranillo, which is my favorite dry. Um, we also have a great selection of sweets, but all of our sweets start as dry bases. So we have a Cranberry Shiraz, we have a Peach Chardonnay, we have a Blackberry that's a Merlot, and so our sweets are not syrupy, super, super sweet, but they are sweet. And then we have a, some specialty wines. We have our ports that I discussed. We have the Boss Lady and the Love Potion, which is our chocolate raspberry right now. But we have lots of specialty wines through the years, uh, through the through the year. We have our um, Hocus Pocus, which is our pumpkin spice port that comes out around Halloween and all kinds of fun stuff. So besides um, going in and drinking wine or drinking wine at one of your events, can people buy your wine online? Yep. We sell to 36 different states, including Ohio. So we ship to those states through a entity called Vino Shipper. So all you got to do is go to our website and you can buy right from our website. If you come in and you're not a wine drinker, we also have wine slushies. We have beer. We have bourbon. Um, if you don't know what you like, you can do a flight of wine so you can do some tasting. There's all kinds of different opportunities. So on wine... Um... After you make the wine, um, does the wine have to sit for a period of time afterwards, for those of us who don't really know? <laughs> it sure does. We, we make the wine initially. We put the yeast in and let it do its thing for a while. Uh, the great thing about making my wine, my husband says, is you can just let it sit. And if you decide you don't want to do something one day, you can do it the next day. But yeah, it does have to sit for a while. Uh, once the yeast has done everything it needs to do to create the alcohol, then we do what's called racking. And we take the wine off the top and all the dead yeast falls to the bottom. And we get all the, what I like to call lovingly wine goo off the bottom of the tank and put it in a new tank. Then again, let it sit and just let it age for a little bit and before we bottle. So then we taste it all the way through the process and make sure it tastes good before we put it in a bottle. And that's how it works. So, so from the time you make it to the time it's ready to bottle and sell, um, is that like a month? Is that a year? Sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's six weeks, sometimes it's a year. <laughs> We've had some that have um, gone very quickly and some that should go quickly, not go quickly. <laughs> so there's times I'm standing over it going, please be done, please be done. And it's not done. It just, it does what it wants and we just have to wait for, until it's ready. So. So how do you come up with the ideas for the different kinds of wine? So we always make the joke that our, our executive boardroom, since our whole employee list consists of me, my husband, and our 22-year-old son, is that we make all executive decisions in our executive boardroom, which is our hot tub. <laughs> and he usually hands me a list of juice options, and we decide what we're going to do next, unless there's something special coming up that we decide that we want to do. We recently made a, a strawberry called um, Swanton Strawberry. So our names are creative 
and we decide on wines based on what's going on in the community and what's happening in our area. So when you make a batch, how big is a batch? So the dry, the dry wines we make usually in 30 gallon batches, these sweet wines, which is prob- about 85% of my sales, we make in larger batches, a hundred gallons at a time. The best place then would be online is, is your wine sold anywhere else other than online? Yes. Our wine is sold at, um, a carry out on Schaefer road called R and S. We're also at the casual pint in Toledo. If you haven't been to the casual pint, it's a super cool place and the owners are amazing. They um, have a great tap room that has 35 different taps that you can get all local, different local beers and those taps change here and there. Um, and our, so our wine is available there as well. We're also partnered with two bandits in Hicksville and they don't make wine and we don't make beer. So it's a great partnership because we serve their beer and they serve our wine. So um, I, guess, I think that's about it locally, but yeah, those are the places that we sell around the area. You've been at the Swanton address for how long? We've been here for three years. And what are your plans for the future? Well, our village has an amazing facade improvement program. Last year, we did $20,000 worth of brickwork to the top of the building, um, and the village paid for half of that. And this year, we are painting the building to make it look like it was like it was when it was built, and the village is paying for half of that as well. So. Um, This village has great economic development opportunities. So that's the beginning of this, of of our expansion plans, is to get the building back to the historical value that it was initially. Um, We are then going to expand our tasting room. And then eventually that 4,000 square foot ballroom that's upstairs, we want to turn into a banquet hall. So we have the short-term plan and the long-term plan for expansion. So Julia, I want to recommend, um, your winery. Um, I think, uh, it's great because of the historical significance, uh, the taste of the wine. And I think your marketing and your social media is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, how often does, uh, your dog, the boss lady visit? My dog is here every day. <laughs> <laughs> She's not currently here with me now. Cause I didn't want her in the recording but she's normally here with us in our office every day. And we have lots of customers who love her and want to see her. Um, her name's Dixie, but everyone calls her the boss lady. And that's the name of our wine, the port that's named after her. So you'll see her. If you follow us on social media, you'll see her in a lot of our advertising. Thank you for being with us today. And uh, I wish you and your husband and the winery much success. Well, thank you, and I appreciate how supportive you've been of us all these years, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today.